There are growing concerns about political violence after the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump yesterday. The Violence Prevention Research Program at UC Davis has done annual surveys on support for and willingness to engage in political violence. Joining me now to talk more about that research and the current climate surrounding the 2024 election is UC Davis professor Dr. Garen J. Wintemute. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me, Brittany. You've been doing this research since 2022. Since then, what are the main trends in the data that you have collected so far? We found that a concerning minority of the population supported political violence, thought that it was justified, and, and of that group, um, a fair percentage said that they would be willing to engage in such violence personally. But most people rejected political violence over and over again. And even of those who supported it in theory, most said they wouldn't engage in it in practice. And there's more good news. Support for political violence went down from 2022, which was an election year, to 2023, which was not. You've said you treat political violence as a health problem. Why is that? Uh, it's really simple. Um, I'll generalize to violence in general. Um, if violence isn't a health problem, then why are all these people dying from it? it? It really is that simple. The concern, obviously, that we all have is that political violence will have will cause a large number of deaths and injuries in the United States. And you said from 2022, which was an election year, down to 2023, those numbers went down. Of course, we're in a big election year right now. So do you think that political violence, especially now with the assassination attempt on the former president, could or will determine what happens in November? So as it happened, we got our 2024 data just a couple weeks ago. Um, we don't have final results, but I took a quick look at the day the data came, and I did not see the rebound that, frankly, I was expecting to see. So we won't have final results probably until next month, but I'm optimistic about what we're going to be able to tell people when that happens. Your optimism. I I'm glad that you're saying that because how I wanted to end, you know, people not just here in our region, but across the U.S. are so deeply concerned about what happened to the former president, what kind of precedent it may or may not set, and what this means for the safety of all of us. So through your career and your research, what is a point of that hope, maybe that optimism that we could end on? It's, it's that most people reject political violence, but I have a challenge for your viewers. Those of us who reject violence do not have the luxury of being spectators at a train wreck. We are on the train. And if political violence is not going to determine the outcome of this election, it's going to be because all of us who oppose it make that opposition very clear, make clear to everyone we know that violence is not how we solve political differences in the United States. Saying that often enough and loudly enough will make it happen. And that's the exact message we heard from President Joe Biden tonight in his address to the nation. Doctor, thank you so much for your time with us.